morning. There was a very popular sitcom in the 90s called Frasier. And in one particular episode, the protagonist of the show needed to learn how to ride a bicycle. He wasn't a very athletic person. And so now in his adulthood, he climbed upon a bike and was trying to learn not simply how to pedal and move forward, but how to stay upright and not crash down. As he began to take each movement forward, his focus was on a small tree that was just off the side of the road. And no matter how far he went and how long he was on the bicycle practicing, he always seemed to move and go towards that tree, crashing into it and falling to the ground. Today, the epistle that we heard proclaimed to us through St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians calls us and heightens our mind to think about the new calling of grace that Christ has sent us upon. In many ways, he is instructing us how to uh, progress down the path that leads to salvation, to continue to live in this world, but to have our minds and our thoughts focused on Christ. But there's an issue. Because we are distracted by that tree. Not a physical tree that stands to the side of the road, but we are distracted by our concerns and cares for the things of this world. And so even as we try to set our feet on that straight and narrow path, even as we struggle to move forward and to progress in our own prayer life towards God for the purpose of being united with Him, we find ourselves somehow attracted to the tree, crashing into it and falling over. St. Paul reminds us, brethren, you are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and move among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. He tells us not to give up hope. Not to worry how many times we fall down and we crash. But each time to pick ourselves up to right ourselves on that path, to seek Him, and to do our best to try to follow Him. Is it easy? Oh my goodness, it's not easy. But Christ came to show us that it is possible through His grace, by following the manner in which He lived by becoming one of us. And so St. Paul teaches us, and further uh, the teachings of Christ. Therefore come out from them and be separate from them, says the Lord. And touch nothing unclean. What is he calling us to separate ourselves from? The world. He's calling our attention to the purpose of our journey and saying it is necessary for us to keep 
our focus and our vision on Him. To forget the distractions that seem to somehow always call us there, always pulling us, pulling us off course, creating an instance where we crash and we fall. We need to change this pattern of behavior. And the church provides us with the tools. The church provides us with the tools of fasting. The church provides us with the words of prayer, of doxology to God, of hymns of repentance, right? forgiveness, contrition of heart, of looking at God and saying, I am trying, but I am weak, and I somehow still get pulled to the side and still fall. In today's gospel lesson, we hear the voice of the Canaanite woman crying out to Christ, Lord, help me. We're told that the disciples actually approach Jesus and tell him, you're not listening to her. She's still crying. Tell her to go away. She's creating a commotion, which tells you that she just didn't say it once that she was crying out as he was walking, pleading to Christ, knowing full well what she was asking. Not only does Christ not immediately respond to her cries, not only did the disciples come and say, Lord, please send her away, but he then speaks to her and says, didn't come but to save the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Yet even then she was not dissuaded. Even then she did not talk, turn back. In fact, she then fell at her feet and said, Lord, help me. And we know the famous dialogue that took place. It is not right for the master to give food to the dogs when it is meant for the children. And yet her response, yes, Lord, but even the dogs must eat from the food that falls from the master's table. And so for us to be able to see how it is that we are pulled to recognize first how it is that we are so tethered to this world, how we are uh, struggling to change our pattern of learned behaviors that lead us astray without us even realizing it <laughs> until we're lying on the side of the road. We don't try to end there. But somehow, without even recognizing it, we are being drawn there by our subconscious, by learned patterns of behavior. And so now, through the teachings of Christ and through the words of St. Paul, we are being called to a greater realization of this fact. And we are shown through the actions of the Canaanite woman what we are called to do, to not be deterred, to continue to cry out, to continue to ask, to continue to plead, to Jesus to help us, to lift us up, to show us the manner in which we are to walk. The epistle continues. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And it concludes with the following verse. Since we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit and make holiness perfect in the fear of God. We don't do this on our own. We are called to that realization to cry out to Christ 
But just like Jesus healed the Canaanite woman daughter who was possessed because of her great faith, so he will bring healing to us through the grace of the Holy Spirit. It's God's grace that provides us the fortitude and the strength to continue to progress on our journey to him. To untie those things that tether us to this world and to change our pattern of learned behavior so that we can then see um, clearly before us in whose presence we stand and who gives us encouragement and strength and power and unceasing glory. May God continue to grant us such wisdom and peace.